Good morning, faithful listeners. We just want to give a quick shout out after having the last week off. Um, we actually took an official week off, but we're back, we're rolling, and we're going to bring you some exciting news and some, well, we're going to cut low on sports. But welcome back. Once again, the Loki and Jabroni show is coming at you right now. <laughs> So what's up, man? Like a bat out of hell, we return. I love it. We do. We do. After the party. You, that week off was badass. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Um, I had a... <laughs> we have, obviously, people popping over all the time. And, you know, we had our things our things going on. And somebody somebody said that I was in, I was in quote, unquote, rare form. And I said, dude, I was in party mode. <laughs> Anybody didn't catch those dance moves, man. This guy should be on Soul Train Listen, tomorrow. If, when you are when you're when when you're at a party and and you go into that mode, you have to be in party mode. If you're not in party mode, then you're in lousy mode and lousy mode is boring. Mm-hmm. Super boring. But no, we had a great time. Uh Eddie Focus was doing some DJ gigs. You haven't seen the videos. Jabroni our very own was even up there uh mixing and yeah. kicking and and getting to know, uh, getting to know a little bit of the flaves. I did learn a little bit. It was fun. I mean, you know, again, Eddie and I can go back and forth and pick on each other. You know, guitars are boring. No, your music is boring. Whatever the case, we had fun. We did a little rock and roll. Did a little of that hip hop go- goober, whatever. I loved it. I had a good time, and I had I had a great time at the party. So thank you for having me in mind here. Oh, absolutely. It was a. It was a- it's a bash, man. And if you didn't make it, <laughs> you're, you're you're not cool. Like, well, that was that was one of the reasons why we didn't go last week because there was no <laughs> way we were going to try to record and edit. Um, we we I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off the whole morning before that, um, and in the afternoon. I got to yeah. give you credit with your fantastic signs pointing people to where they have to go. <laughs> if you haven't seen the pictures, Loki took notebook paper and with magic marker. You know, showed them where the trash is and the keg and where this is. And honestly, it was, it was kind of neat. We all had a good laugh over it. It was kind of yeah, cool. But at the end of the day, it worked out very oh, of well. Of course. Because, <laughs> again, when some of these people, and let, let's look, we're not picking on anybody, but when you start to have alcohol and fun and sunshine and the pool and everything, you become dumb in a box of shit. You need those signs to point you. Lazy right too. Lazy. Lazy as a you motherfucker. Just like drop something somewhere, you know? I actually paid children to get me beer. <laughs> I'm not that's, ashamed that's, to say dude, it. That, that's awesome. That's it why was, I had a kid, so I don't have hot. to get to the fridge it anymore. Hot, man. It was definitely fucking warm. So uh, what's on your mind, man? Well, we said we were going to talk about it last week. I'm actually going to talk about it this week. Went to two fantastic concerts. Uh, one was Friday night. Can't remember the date, so fuck you if I don't remember the date. 22nd. Not yesterday. 22nd. Not the, 22nd. Thank you very much. See, this is why he's on board. That was uh, Disturbed, Breaking Benjamin, St. Sonia, and Alter Bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, Show was great. Disturbed always puts on a knockdown, drag out fucking show. Uh, the funniest thing I thought, which you see a lot of people milling around beforehand, uh, the Immortals' 21 year old son was there. He bought us beer. It was great to run into him. Um, sometime after, I believe it was Stupefy, there was a fight down in the pit. So Dave Draymond just cuts everything, bring the house lights up, and he starts chastising these two. Like, this is not why people come to a rock show, asshole. They come to let go, and they come to have fun and forget their problems. Not to start a fucking fight in the pit. If that's what you want to do, walk your ass home. I don't want you here. None of these people want you here. You know, we're pro-cop. We're this, we're that. We want you to have a good time. But if you fuck up, man, get the hell out of my show. 18,000 people on their feet cheering. Mm -hmm. Not one person was like, fuck that. They can fight if they want to. You know, it's our individual liberty, and thank you, Ed, for introducing that piece of vernacular into my vocabulary because I've used that a lot this week. Do not infringe upon my individual liberty. If you want to have a pit and I'm in it, then I've made that choice. But if I'm standing to the side and 42 people are running into me, that's a problem. Don't start a fight at a show. Go have a good time. It was fantastic. Now, before the show, 
we're walking around and I'm seeing a bunch of jacked up motherfuckers with a beard and we're having a good time. We're like, find the Tugmans. Oh, yeah. Angela and I are playing a game called Find the Tugmans. So every time guy walks by jacked up with a beard, I'm like, look, it's a Tugman. Look over there. It's a Tugman. We're leaving the show. We are in the parking lot. I find me my last Tugman of the evening. I say, hey, look, there's a Tugman. And, you know, he's, they're walking, doing their thing. He turns to talk to his little girl date, whatever she is. And she's like, wait a minute. That's actually Blair Tugman. No, it's not. If it's Blair Tugman, yell his name. See if he turns around. Of course, the immortal balls of steel. Blair! Who turns around? Blair fucking Tugman. Right there in the parking lot. It was a great time. Great seeing That's him. Awesome. He wants to come back. He's digging what we're doing with this revolution lately. Oh, I know. He is on it like <laughs> nobody's business. I know Blake <clears throat> enjoys this stuff, too. Monday night, 23rd, 20, Monday the 25th was uh, Heart, Cheap Trick, and Joan Jett. Didn't think much of Cheap Trick before going in. Love them now. Absolutely love well, them. Well, you also, they, they, they're one of those bands that actually stood the test of time. Oh, yeah. A lot of band hearts, one of them, obviously. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a nice little group that they got going together because they all kind of have the same ideas, you know? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I, I walked out of there. I actually made it a point to Facebook message a gentleman that was, is uh, one of the guys on Three Sides of the Coin podcast. If mm-hmm. you've never listened to them, go out and check them out. If you love Kiss, Three Sides is your podcast of choice. I sent a message to Tommy Summers. I'm like, look, I've heard you for two years talk about Cheap Trick and how awesome they are, and each time I want to throw up in my shorts, man. I just want to open my pants, throw up, put it back. I'm sitting here at this show. They just finished, and they're amazing. I'm sorry. I owe you an apology. Tommy and I are now friends on Facebook. I've listened to his show for two years. I think they do a great job, but Cheap Trick really impressed me. Of course, what can you say about Joan fucking Jett? Yeah, well, she's... 58 years old. She's still rocking the purple leather pants and looking good in them. Mm-hmm. Again, incredible show. She's like, beginning she's like the rock and roll Tina Turner. Without question. You know? Oh, great, great analogy right there. <clears throat> and then Hart comes out. Uh, Joan Jett blasted out for an hour and change, and then Hart comes out, just does amazing. I'll always love Hart. Her fucking voice is... Both of them. Even um, Nancy, the blonde yeah, one, had a couple yeah. of songs that she did. Yeah. They closed with two Zeppelin songs, uh, Stairway to Heaven They've and The Immigrant Song. they lately. But dude, let me tell you, as a guy who does not like Zeppelin, they owned it. No, they... Um, they owned it. They did. They did a show. I want to say in England. Robert Plant. We were talking. And he about was it a right there, and he was like in fucking tears. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they've been they've been adding these songs into their you know their rep- repertoire here, mm-hmm. and, and it's for when Ann Wilson. No joke, guys. If you get a chance and Hart comes through your town, please don't hesitate. Go see them. I know people will say, "Oh, Hart, my seventies and eighties. Why do I want to go see a bunch of old people?" Let me tell you why. Again, Friday night, go to see Disturbed. Disturbed, main event, awesome. The other three bands, eh, not so much. Breaking Benjamin was really good. So let me yeah. take them out of the equation. Disturbed and Breaking Benjamin are going to go over here on this little shelf. St. Sonia, decent. Alter Bridge, they're Nickelback with a better singer. Uh, All right? Yeah. These three bands comprised of people 55 and older that I saw Monday night kick the shit out of the two openers at the Disturbed show and kick the shit out of a lot of bands I see. The energy's still there. The heart's still mm-hmm. there. The passion's still there. No, no pun intended on saying heart. But everything is there, and they kick the shit out of 90% of the bands I've seen in the last two years. Yeah, yeah exactly, man. And so that's, don't you hesitate. Can't, you can't you know, pass it up. Um, I recently noticed that I have on my thing, it's a, it's a concert channel. Mm-hmm. So I'm I able, saw that you were watching. What was yeah, it? Yeah, uh, it was Billy Joel. Nice. I saw Billy Joel live in Stratton Island. It was an 86 concert. Now, you got to think, 86... I'm like 12 years old, right? There's no way, first of all, I'd be going to a Billy Joel concert. There's no way I would appreciate the Billy Joel concert. You Not know what at I'm 12, no. The first time, I mean, I started listening to Billy right around 18 or so. I really, really liked his music. My family is big Billy Joel fans, so, you know, we it just kind of twisted in. I saw him probably late 90s, and at this point, he's He's, he's getting up there. He's pretty He's pretty piano ridden. You know what I'm saying? He'll get up and he does his little thing and this, that, and the other thing. He's and not he, doing the running around and jumping. Exactly. The Garth Brooks experience, if you will. Right, exactly, exactly. Man, what, what, he had literally five pianos set up at different areas. Now, this is in the 86 show. And this is in the 86 okay. show. Now, he still does the different pianos in different areas, but now it's like he does, you know, he actually walks to the different sections and, you know. Dude, he was like he was like nobody else's business, and the fact that I was able to experience that was so freaking mm-hmm. cool. And that's leading to the point that you're making. These guys have put 
their heart and soul into these so much that you might not have that energetic flair that they used to have, that explosiveness out in the stage running around and being crazy. But, man, the music never changes. Oh, yeah. The music is always the same. It always sounds perfect. It's hot. It's, it's on point. They're, they're <clears throat> doing it, and they're doing it right. Exactly. You know, exactly. People, people give me shit for being a Kiss fan, and still I'm still trying to score tickets for October, which might be a logistical nightmare because I believe Henry Rollins in Boston is the same night. Yeah. I'm going to Henry. Fuck that. I've, been, I've seen Kiss 43 times. I can pass on one show. I want to see fucking Henry Rollins. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, but you go to a Kiss show and you forget that they're late fifties, early sixties. Gene Sim, I'm sorry, he who shall not be named is sixty six, and he's kicking ass. Yeah, they are. My old man is the same age and has a fraction, a smidge and a sliver of the energy of Gene Simmons. You get my dad to walk more than three miles, you've done something. That's not a knock, you know. That's that's me telling the truth. I hope to have that energy that Gene Simmons has. When I'm 66 years old, mm-hmm. and he's out there, and he still they whip the ass out of almost every band you'll see. Exactly, and that and that's what you go for, man. You go for that energy. Go for they know at this point what gets the crowd going, and they know at this point how to how to mm-hmm. get things going. Yeah, you know I, I, I don't know how many years ago it was. Um, it was before Emma was born. I went and saw Blue Oyster Cult, which is basically two original guys in a backup band, kind of like Pink Floyd is now. Yeah. Pink Floyd fans, stop fucking with me for saying Kiss is half a band. You have David yeah. Gilmore and an 18-piece backup band, you <laughs> pretentious fucks. So I went to see Blue Oyster Cult. And yes, they are just as old, if not a smidge older than Kiss. And they're all standing in one place. There's no entertainment factor. The lights are, it's spotlights and a couple of flashing mm-hmm. here and there. And don't fear the reaper, the cinema, the... Their opening band that night was equally as old, Boston. Boston is running and having a good time and jumping. And still... Even if you're not running and jumping, be flashy. I paid a lot of money. If I wanted to hear just the songs, I'd buy the damn CD. Exactly. Exactly. Give the people the show they you, paid. You go for. to a show, you want you do want to experience mm-hmm. it. You want to have an experience. So no, that that's awesome. Um so... no, I think, I, but I'm sorry to interrupt, but thank <clears> you to the immortal beloved for Picking up those tickets way early on in the year and giving us something to look forward to. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Fucking awesome. That is awesome. So uh, the past week, um, the people got to got to witness uh, the end of an era, as I like to call it. Bernie has subsided to the beast uh, and has offered his hand in friendship to the bitch of the north. <laughs> well, I guess I'll put the DNC on the top of my list. <laughs> um, I watched. It was, it was it was a lot like when you drive down a highway, you're on a road trip, and you see a three car pile up, and you. See, I know you slow down for safety reasons, but everybody's neck turns, and you're looking for something. Maybe you're looking for a blood spot or how crumpled the car is. I watched Hillary Clinton's speech, and I watched, unfortunately, Chelsea Clinton lead her in, and it's an hour and forty five minutes. I'm never going to get back. Mm-hmm. But I watched with with great attention and interest. And I'll get to Hillary's speech later on. What I want to say is when she mentions Bernie in the speech and you see Bernie sitting in the little private box with his, I don't know if it's his wife or mistress yeah, or whomever yeah, she is. Yeah. No, I don't want to say mistress. No, I'm not his, a Bernie I think, his, I think it was his wife. Okay. I think, yeah. So he's sitting up there and he's like, and for Bernie Sanders. <sighs> and the camera flashes to Bernie. Hands are folded in front of him, head between his shoulders. He's kind of rocking back and forth. And the look on his face was like, Bitch, I don't even want to hear your voice right now. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and we, we spoke on the reason why he has to endorse, because then he, if he doesn't, he doesn't get his chance to speak at the DNC, which I think is bullshit. You don't have to endorse your – you can congratulate them. That's what I'm saying. You know, if we play checkers and you win, I'm going to say, hey, man, congratulations. I don't have to like the outcome, nor do I have to say, Mike is the checkers champion of the world. I don't have to do any right. of that shit. It's, I think it's completely unfair. It's a bullshit, outdated rule. However, there's Bernie. And every time, and Bernie and I are going to work together on this, that, and the college tuition, and this and that. And the anger is rising in his face. His face went from ash and white, which is normal, exactly. to pink. To bright red by the time she was done with the Bernie Sanders part of the it's, speech. It's like how you, you know, when you bring up the, you know, I, I play you in checkers. The way I look at it, it's just, it's almost the same thing. You can play checkers and you can play chess. Mm-hmm. If you beat me in checkers, whatever. If you beat me in chess, especially if we're both good at it, 
you get a little bit more respect. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You get a little bit re- more respect for the win from the game that you play. Mm-hmm. And the integrity you use playing. You feeling me here? You oh, feel I do, me because here? I, that rolled through my mind watching that <laughs> speech. It's like, that bitch cheated to beat me, that, and now I have to sit here and smile? Fuck that puto. That, that bitch played Uno against you. Not only did you have to have your cards open to her, <laughs> she could draw five and put back six anytime she wanted. So before the game was even started, it yep. was over. The rules you were lost. slanted, right, not exactly. in your favor. You lost. Would it not have been here? When you, not have been here! When you get something like that done to you, it's almost... Uh, what, what do they call it in the NFL? Uh, flagrant, flagrant foul. It, it, but but it's more than that. It's uh, it's un, it's unsportsmanlike conduct. It is unsportsmanlike because it's it's taunting, taunting, taunting. That's what it is. They, they actually have taunting. So if if I score an eighty yard touchdown on you, and there's you are literally the only one next to me, and you miss the tackle, and I do my celebration, that's where it ends. Right now, you get up and you turn your head and you go down. Now. Because I beat you so bad, and because I want to continue the bad mouthing, I continue on and I taunt you again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna counter that. <laughs> I'm gonna counter that because I don't mind talking a little shit here and there. Now, if oh, I, that's fine. You just talk to shit when you I score. If I beat you clean on an 80 yard touchdown and I throw a massive celebration, here's my question. It's in two parts. If one, did I do it clean? Because if I did it clean, that celebration is not only deserved, it's necessary. Right. But The initial celebration. Right. Now, if I run an 80-yard touchdown and there's three clips and two holds behind me and nobody calls them, and then I have that massive celebration, I'm an asshole. Now, uh, not if you didn't know them. I mean, if, you, you're, if you're celebrating and then you're mid-celebration, you see all these fucking, you know, all these guys on the ground holding their backs and shit, and you're like, hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna put my mind. Now I'm gonna put my mind in the in the mode of professional athletes. Like, well, I don't see a flag. Yeah, bah, 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 bah. exactly. I wanted so badly. Not just be. I don't like her. I'm just gonna say it right now. I don't like her. I really I felt like, like somebody should have like thrown a taunting flag I on her, man. For her at the end of her speech to just throw her speech up in the air and go, neener, neener, neener. I'm untouchable no, because it's... basically that's what it boils down no, it to. It really did. It All really these did. indiscretions that she'll never stand up for. The country owes Richard Nixon a huge fucking apology. Let's start there. Yeah. And um, number two, Chelsea, Kelsey, Welsey, whatever the fuck her name is. (laughs) She is not. She is not. Not, 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 people, that fucking important. She is so not important. It's ridiculous. We are essentially, they, she essentially got a job on her name, and I still don't think she knows how to fucking do it. I'm, 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 I don't even know what her damn job is, and at this point, I don't care. I, I've always said it. You know, the, 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 the sons and the daughters of the rich become the leaders. Uh, you can take Ivanka Trump out of the mix. That, that's a girl who didn't want to ride her dad's coattails, went to two different colleges, got all these degrees. Well, you know, there are and then, people that but do now that. now she works with her old man. Chelsea Clinton did fuck all, and now she's reaping the benefit. I know a whole lot of people like that in this world, mm-hmm. and it sucks, and they mm-hmm. never recognize it. And And... Just like I said, just the fact that that she's just a part of this whole scenario. I mean, I understand it's your freaking family. We've 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 had enough of the Clintons. We really have. Um, you know, people are talking about, oh well, you know, there was a blatant thing in the '90s with Bush. No shit, Sherlock. And I think we made just about a big enough stink on that one too. What uh, with Bush? When Bush uh, got the uh, the ballots mixed up, oh yeah, amazingly, yeah. yeah, amazingly. Look, you just, you fucking... just spoke on Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton had his little blowjob under the desk. Had a couple of women come out and say, "A few." Let's be look, honest. Look, I'm, I'm going. He was a whore in the White House. Listen, okay. <laughs> what what the difference is between Bill, who was still one of my favorite presidents of all time, and Hillary? Is Bill stood up? At first, he said, "I did not have sexual relations with that woman." At all. And then they find it. They find the info. They put him in front of the impeachment process. They were getting ready to try to boot him out of office. And what it turns out to be, well, I don't know. I don't remember exactly 20 years ago. I will look it up. I will talk about it next week for a brief moment in time. But he stood up for what they were charging mm-hmm. him for. I made mistakes. Now I have to stand up and deal with whatever punishment is levied my way. No punishment handed down. He got a slap on the wrist. Don't do it again. Live clean, yada, yada. But 
Props for him for standing up and looking people in the eye and saying, you know what? I'm guilty. I did this. And he did it. Hillary, like dandruff off the shoulder. It's gone. My, my, problem, my problem with Hillary is I think that whole thing embarrassed her so bad. And she's still living off that embarrassment. And this is why she is like a caged animal and just attacking anything right now. This means more to her than I think her own family does. I, hmm. to, to have this control of this company, right? Or um, this company, this, <laughs> it really is a company. It is a company. It really is a company. But this, this country is like her final way of saying, I am worth something. I'm not just some little girl that got cheated on by her husband in the Oval Office. You know what I'm saying? Like, I became something. Fuck him. Fuck you all. Look at me now. Look where I am now. Here's where I'm That's gonna, what scares me. Here's where I'm going to throw a bit of faint, slight, minuscule praise. Don't forget, her, she's her still her. human. Mm-hmm. She's still very much human, is, and emotions still very and much control. this controls. is where I'm, I'm going to that point. Good, good job by saying that. Um, they've been married 45 years. Mm-hmm. They have their problems. They work through the problems. They move forward. And, and they do it on, on the biggest stage of them all. Your husband is the leader of the free world. He gets a Hummer or two or five or 200 and he gets caught out you stuck through you work through it we live in a time now where if you so much as fart during dinner girl's gone Mm -hmm. it's like i can't do this way i'm so hurt emotionally fuck you and there's also guys look i'm gonna go to both sides of the thing man man she don't cut her toenails she got dragon breath in the morning i'm out of here no fuck you Back in the day, we fixed shit. We didn't throw it away because it was broken. We fixed it. You make a living fixing broken things. Mm -hmm. There is a time where it becomes irrevocably broken. And there is a time where you can look and go, we can move past this because something is strong enough. And if you're the one walking away, you're the weak one. Fuck you. Bye. Mm -hmm. My name is Chris Burns, and I approve this message. And and, and just like you said, some things can't be fixed. Correct. Some things are so far torn down that you can't, no matter how much time and know how much effort you throw into mm-hmm. it, it's not going to get fixed. And that's, yeah. that's just, that's just the reality. Right. That if is the cold, hard reality. If you're a continually <laughs> physically abused woman, get out. Yeah. Seriously. Yes. Get yes. out. Yes. Do not take it anymore. Men too. Like, exactly. Men too. Men can there's, I, I'll tell you what, there, there's, men don't think that you can be emotionally scarred or men don't oh. think that you can be, you can be fucked with. You can. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be physical, people. Abuse is mental. Abuse is monetary. Abuse is anything that you feel that you feel bad about. You can be abused by your significant other's family member. You can be abused by their best friend. Yes. If you, at some point, it's got to stop. I, again, let's throw some shine onto the Clintons real quick. 45 years. Nowadays, some marriages don't last 45 weeks. So good on them, man. Good on well, I got, them. I got to give, yeah, give them, give, them, give them the respect that, it, you know, that they've, they're, they're willing to work through things. But let's, I think it's more beneficial for her to keep this family going than it ever was for Bill. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at Bill now. You oh, see the man. pictures now? Oh, my God. He, he is a sad-looking dude right he now. He is a walking disaster. Him playing with those balloons at the DNC was like watching Emma at the pool. I'm like, there, here's, a, here's the former leader of our country, one of, the, one of the most awesome presidents we've ever had. Give her, you know, Take away his indiscretions. They all have them. Don't sit on your high horse and say, my president never. Your president did. Yeah, they all did. We just weren't in a 24-hour news cycle at that mm-hmm. point. He's playing with those balloons like a five-year-old kid. Oh, absolutely. And he's got that blank look on his face the entire night. During her speech, they're flipping back and forth, and they show Bill, and he's just – You'd think he's waiting for the next Disney film to come on. Like, uh. No, he is. He, he, he looks lobotomized. I, sh- I sure hope they bring the Coca Cola down <laughs> soon. I'm parched. He looks like he's been lobotomized. That poor he bastard. really does. And it's sad when you look at him. He was in his 40s, so now he's obviously in his mid to late 60s. You look at some guy. Again, sh- let's, let's talk back. We were just talking about the music yes. where you see. You know, some I mean, of these fucking, musicians. What's his name? Um, uh, Steven Tyler. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, a, cre- he's a creepy looking dude, but for 70, he looks, mm-hmm. he doesn't look like Bill. No. He doesn't look anywhere next Poor to Bill. Bill man. Poor Bill looks like since he walked out of that office in January 2000 and handed it over to the drunken cowboy idiot, 
Looks like he has just walked out and taken a beating for the last mm-hmm. 16, 20 years. Yes. That poor guy, I'm wondering if there's something wrong. They're not Obviously, there's something that we don't know. And you know what? Good. We shouldn't know every damn thing. You know, Bill Clinton, if he has Parkinson's, if he has Alzheimer's, if he has, you know, rickets or hemorrhoids, I don't need to know that. Mm-hmm. But there's certainly something not right with William Jefferson Clinton right now. No, I agree. I agree. I agree, man. And and the, like we said, the shitty part is, you know, she needs the name more than, than he does. At this point, At yes, this point. And once the, <laughs> the scary part is, though, once it's over... Once it's over, then you know how much how much is he going to be? You know needed? something. Some people. Let me try that again in English. Something some people forget is that if Hillary Clinton becomes president, everybody's all up in arms about this is history. This is the first time a woman president. Let me give you another piece of history. Two more pieces. One, it'll be the first time you have a first man, or how are they going to call him the first husband if yeah. if she gets yeah. elected? Yeah. Okay. Not only is that history, but it's the first time ever in our great country where the former leader of the free world is now thrust into that subservient role. How the mighty – it's not even how the mighty have fallen because it's also going to be another piece of history, the first time a husband and a wife in this country have run the country. Yeah. At separate times, of course, but there's, there's more history here than meets the eye. I don't want that history because I just don't like her. I no. don't like her. No, no. Oh. No, I'm I'm right there with you, dude. Like I said, I just the smugness that she's been having lately are is just ridiculous. It really is. It's it's absolutely insane. It's you, you do. You wanna you wanna just, just slap she her. She wore that the, throughout that hour and forty five minute speech, she wore that shit eating grin, and I know <clears throat> part of it is the pride of having the nomination to be able to run for the highest office in America. I get it. The other part of it, again, neener, 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 yeah. I beat the system, fuck you, America, mm-hmm. laws are for poor people. That's what I saw in her face Thursday night watching that speech, and it it absolutely fired me up, and not in a good way. Sometimes you watch a politician give a speech, and you hear, I heard a yes. lot of good things in her speech, yes. and as I'm watching this, and she says, we're going to help this, and we're going to get, the, the rich are finally going to pay their fair share of taxes, I'm like, bullshit. Yeah, and we're gonna work with Bernie Sanders to make in-state colleges. So if Mike Smith, at 18 years old, wants to go to UConn, he can go for free. Bullshit. <laughs> Where's all this stuff coming from? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that that's that's my biggest thing. It's just the same thing with uh, with um, state of Connecticut. Okay. Oh God. We we talked about this earlier between us. We're we're so fucked now. You can only go anywhere but up. We can only go up. We can only go up right now. Um. Did you hear? About the disaster that is the yard goats. Oh, it's ongoing. It is. It's, 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 it's not. No, no, stopped. no. It's 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 at this point they pretty much think it's a flush. It's really? done. The whole, gonna, the you whole got, you've thing. You've got a stadium. You've yep. got a team. All all done. All it's going to be transferred Have they somewhere even else. They in haven't the- even played in Hartford. They never even played in this fucking stadium. We took all this fucking money and we wasted it, dude. We wasted it. And meanwhile, Governor Malloy is sitting here trying to take three hundred thousand dollars of our taxpayers' money to look into how to tax us while we drive. Oh my! Yeah, I heard that the uh, now come the, mile- the mileage tax. Come on. We already pay a mileage tax, people. It's called fucking state tax. It's called your fucking town taxes. We have the highest That's, on top tax on gasoline in the we nation. We already have, exactly. A gas tax is a travel tax. That's exactly what it was designed for. Your town taxes is because you travel on the town roads. Mm -hmm. They charge you to drive on those roads. So now they're going to charge you to drive just to drive. You're basically charging me double to do what triple. I already do. You're charging oh, me yeah. triple. If you you're taking tax, the gas tax. You're taking the town tax. DOT. And now you're going to yep. take this other tax of driving. Well, instead of taxing us for driving, why don't you fix the fucking roads? Because there is a road not far from here, and you and I have driven down it, that leads from Preston, Connecticut, to Norwich, Connecticut. And you were the one that showed me. Watch how this changes between town to town. Mm-hmm. Preston takes the tax dollars, and they use them. And the roads are clean and smooth. And the minute you cross over that, where that white pylon is, it says, exiting Preston, entering yes. Norwich. It's well, like boom! it's like a wooden roller coaster <laughs> back in the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> You feel it like is. a fucking David Ortiz bobblehead doll. It's fucking embarrassing. Being held by a six-year-old. Look at what 
my God. <laughs> it's embarrassing. This is the reason why people are leaving this fucking state in the masses, man. This this setup, this this idea of where the fuck this money is coming from is what these people have got to start realizing. Like you can sit there and you can say, yeah, that's a great idea. This this free this free schooling is fantastic. Everybody can get an education and everybody can better themselves. Great. How the fuck are you going to pay for it? How are you going to pay the instructors? How are you going to pay the upkeep mm -hmm. on the schools? You got to remember, if you're giving away free education, now every butt in that seat is probably going to be taken. Mm -hmm. Every class is going to be full. All that trash, everything well, else that you, people's going through, who's going to clean this so shit up, So you don't up, get man? into UConn. Maybe you go to Eastern. Maybe you go to Western. Maybe you go as a uh, Yale is down the road. Not that everybody can get into Yale. Don't everybody think free college means a yes. ticket to Yale, you, you, motherfucker. You still have to get accepted. You right. still have to have the grades. You're still... It's the same. I believe in this concept. I don't want to say half-heartedly. I, I, there's going to be a problem with it. The same way I've always been a fan of universal health care, there is no reason a... Man, woman, child, or anything should have to start, in, especially in this day and age, a GoFundMe just so they don't die. There is no reason why if my arm is hanging off by a string, and yes, I'm semi-employed right now, so I don't have health benefits, nor will I ever sign up for bullshit Obamacare mm -hmm. because it's a scam. It's not universal health care. No, don't, don't believe the fucking knows hype. That. That's <laughs> and I go into a hospital and I say, it's going to take $28,000 to re repair your arm. We need it. Well... A, that it goes against the Hippocratic Oath. I'm here to help, and I'm here to, you know, this and that and the other thing. There's no reason any man, woman, or child should have to worry about, if I don't get these small pills that help me regulate my system, I'm going to die. I should start a GoFundMe. You're not taking care of your people. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's, the, that's the biggest thing here, like we said. It's, it's realizing... That you are going to be taking care of your people, number one, but also realizing where this is going to come from. People still have to, people still have to get paid. Mm -hmm. They still have to get paid. They still have to have the thing. The, one of the shittiest things about America is this whole fucking um, student loan shit. Oh yeah, I, I dude, some of the things I, me and Eric were talking the other day, and, and the loans. I mean, he's able to pay it back because of what happened recently. Mm -hmm. But, dude, you're almost talking $100,000. Almost $100,000 that you're expected to pay back. And not, not, this is to not only further you, but this is to make the community better, too. Yeah, the economy grows if, there, if the job, good right. jobs, any So we job. have our buddy Eric over here, who is a programmer and does all this other stuff, which he educated himself with. He went to do the time and he educated. Now, say he didn't do that. Now we have a whole other Eric that just works at McDonald's. Now, this Eric that educated himself and did all of these other things is contributing. Mm -hmm. He's making money, and now he's spending this money, and he's bringing it out into the other areas. This Eric that works at McDonald's doesn't make that much money. He can't contribute as much to the community. He's probably miserable, so he just goes home and just does his thing mm -hmm. instead of going out and doing the rest of the things. This is what an education does. It doesn't just make you better. It makes you and everybody around you better. Mm -hmm. It opens up opportunities for everybody across the board. So, yes, having, having free education is one hell, one hell of a way to get everybody better. But there's got to be an understanding that this free isn't free. Of course not. It's coming from somewhere. Much like our freedom isn't free, and we know where that and comes when, from. And when the taxes start rolling in and people start going, oh, mm. what's this? That's your education that you're using right now. Well, it's, I, I can't live off of this right now, but it's okay. Because once you're done learning, you'll get more money. But I don't have the money now. And you won't have the money now. It's like everything else when you come into it. You have to make that initial You're sacrifice. You're buying on time. It's simple. You have to make that initial sacrifice. Exactly. Uh, if you want to grow it like, like what we did here, we knew we needed more mics. You know what I'm saying? We had to find money. No, we no. didn't. But we Which is why you should it. all go to www.patreon.com forward slash Loki and Jabroni spelled out in letters and donate to the show, please. It's the only way to get better. Yes. And then we can... We can start getting our cameras set up and mm -hmm. everything else that we want to do and make this a better show. But that's the point. You have to sacrifice and you have to put 
into it to get out of it. Exactly. You can't just take and take and take. We've said this a million times. You take out of the bowl constantly and you never replenish that bowl. You're going to reach into that bowl and there's not going to be anything left. And then you're going to be like, well, it's not my job to do it. Oh, but man. it kind of was. Kind of like, sounds like an argument I had with the girls yesterday. <laughs> do the work, you get rewarded. It's that yes. simple. Yes, yes. It's that simple. So that the whole Bernie kind of like Almost bowing down, his heart was broken. To the, it was, and it, and it broke my heart too. It really did because it, I, it, it felt like, yes, we have all these other you know opportunities that are, that are going to lift up. But let's be honest with you, it, that that for me was kind of like that's it. And here's she's, the question I have: for She's you. the president. You know what I'm saying? If he'd have gotten beat by anybody else, Ted Cruz, whoever, Rubio, would you have handled it a little better? Would you have thought a little better of it? Yes, absolutely. Okay, it's her. It's how she's. Dude, you don't get these these memes and these faces if you don't make them. You know what I'm saying? Some of these faces that she makes are evil, dude. They're evil. I mean, yes, Donald's got some pretty crazy faces. I think he was born that way. But yeah, but when he's like, <laughs> nye, nye, and they're getting these, he just looks stupid. You know what I'm saying? He really does just look stupid. Yeah. There are some serious pictures of Hillary Clinton. Look up. Hillary Clinton, evil pictures. I'm going to do that now. I and see what it comes some of these faces, I swear to God, man, they, they, they're they like Lucifer himself reborn. They really are. You can't make faces like that unless you have something wrong with you. I'm sorry. So, yes, I think if he was to get beaten by somebody else, it wouldn't – It wouldn't. I, I would still upset me because – I liked I liked what he was standing for. You were for. a very early supporter. Right. I liked what he was standing for. I liked that he came out of nowhere. I liked that he was working with us to get what he needs okay, to get. Okay, let me just turn these around to you. <laughs> I'm going to post one of these on the page. Look at this one right there. Look at the eyes, dude. Oh, Does the she one where she's turned possessed? off to the side? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put this up on our page with no explanation. If you listen to the show, you'll know, oh, shit, that's, the, that's what they were talking about. <laughs> Good but, call by you. But dude, seriously, serious. Like she is, she's, she's a different, she's a whole different breed of animal. Let me just put it that way. And it, and it really scares me that there's a lot of people out there that, that full heartedly support her. Like you're not listening. You, you people aren't listening. And I think we've said this a bazillion times. Open up your ears. Make a oh, sound are you decision. talking about the sheeple of the divided <laughs> yes. states of America? On to our next the point. Sheeples. I've had more than one discussion this week with friend and foe alike on the wonder, our favorite whipping post Facebook, where basically they're telling people, stop posting these things about Trump and Hillary. I don't want my news feed I, cluttered with it. And if you don't, I will delete you. I'll just delete you. Um, let's start here. And on the top of any Facebook page that you open up, can you do me a favor and open up mm -hmm. your Facebook page? Yep, yep. Your personal Facebook page, the one I'm that on people it. go to. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, I'm I'm ready. Just, okay. What does it say? Harley at the Quinn. Eddie oh my James. God. You should post that too. <laughs> now go to that little thing where it takes you to your page. Yep. Okay. okay. I'm there. What does it say right there? It's Michael. Okay, so that's yours, right? Mm -hmm. To do with as you please. Yes. So if you decide one day on a lark, um, let's say you have tomorrow off, and you want to sit and you want to post pictures of Will Smith all day long, just every hour on the hour, a different shot of Will Smith, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You know why you can do that? Because it's my damn page. It's, that's exactly correct. And my news feed is going to blow up mm -hmm. once an hour on the hour with... Here's Will Smith in a yellow jumpsuit. Here's Will Smith in his Independence Day flight gear. Here's Will Smith um, throwing a beach ball to his son. It's yours. You do with what you like. In fact, let me see if I can get mine up real quick because even when you don't go to your personal page, it has this little thing right up at the top that I love, and I've had this argument with people for many years. It says, what's on your mind? Yes. What's on your mind? Right. What's now, if you mind? don't like it, here's what you can do. I'm going to hit that little arrow right here on Eddie's picture. It says hide post, 
unfollow Eddie. You're still friends, but you can unfollow for the time being. Right. And you don't have to see this. But when you come out, Facebook warriors, and there are many of you, and I've done I've dealt with like six or seven of them this week, basically to come out and to say, I'm I'm done with this. You guys are crazy or you guys are stupid and you're just being tribalistic or you're you're being confrontational. You're, you're basically you're calling your friends names. Right. And when someone like me sees that, I'm like, aha. I say, no, you know what? I agree with you to an extent. Unfortunately, we've, be, we've become the sheeple of the divided states of America. You're either on this side or you're on that side, and everybody needs a hashtag, and everybody needs a label. You've talked about labels a million times in the last couple months. Everybody needs something to cling to instead of exercising their individual liberty. And the minute you try to infringe upon mine, I am going to come at you. So you spend all this time hacking away you're becoming no better than them and you know what i fell into that this week i became no better than them tell if you want to tell me here and i said this here's my challenge to any one of you first you can go to a facebook page you want to add me as a friend if you're not already my friend the name is chris burns you can catch me through the Loki and jabroni show page the last name is b-e-r-n-e-s add me as a friend tell me how to live my life and here's the challenge pick which one of my fucking bills you're gonna pay this month and i'll buy into it because I had the mm-hmm. individual liberty. Yes, sir. I have the freedom of speech, and I caught shit for that, too. Oh, here comes the freedom of speech line. Well, you know what, jackass? It's a privilege that I'm afforded, and I don't abuse it. I'm not going to walk up to an African-American gentleman and use one of the hundreds of slurs because I can. It's wrong. I know better. I use my freedom wisely. I'm not going to walk up to a Chinese guy or whatever and say, go back to China. Da, 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 da. Chances are he was born right down the street and has grown up here his entire fucking life. I'm not going to be that jackass. The freedom of speech means I can argue with you. I yes. can get my views across. Yes. And I'm not going to be stifled for it. The minute you infringe upon my freedom, I will come at you like nobody's ever come at you before. But then I'm going to put that offer out there. It's all fine and good to do this with your fingers and do it on Facebook. Engage me in this conversation. Call me. Appear on the Loki and Jabroni show. I've offered that to each of the six people I had that argument with this week. Do you know how many responses I got? Zero. You can see by the fact that we're sitting here together with no one here that that is the exact 100% case. Facebook is good for two things. Good for two things. Mm -hmm. You can reconnect with people you haven't seen in a million years, and you can use it to share ideas with others, and you can have a wonderful exchange of ideas. Facebook is terrible for two reasons. One, it gave everybody a voice, and they think their voice is better than yours. And two, it gives you the ability, like you spoke about two weeks ago, to say, I don't believe in you and you're not my friend. Delete it. Yes. So does that make you any stronger, any better, because you, on behind the anonymity of your computer, in the safety of your own home, you hit a little button because I don't agree with you. Mike, for... Three years that I've known you, in the year and a half we've worked together, we don't agree on everything. Have, oh, I, no. have, have I ever once just shut you out because, oh, you don't agree with me blind and just lock, stock, and barrel? Fuck you. Delete. Bye. End, right. of, end of podcast. End of friendship. End of fucking everything. <clears throat> no, because I'm not a titty-sensitive, entitled little shit who believes that my opinion is better than yours. There are times you prove me wrong. There are times I prove you wrong. There are times Ed proves us wrong and we prove him wrong. And that's the beauty of open communication, objectivity, and basic adult thinking. And if you can't do that, you know what? Do me a favor. Hit the button. Delete me. But make sure if you do, you don't end up giving me a call here or a text there and say, hey, I'm really sorry about that Facebook thing, but you really upset me. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Did I hurt our little feelings? Come get your, come get your participation well, trophy. See, see, the funny thing is you are, you are allowed to, to voice your displeasure, which is absolutely everybody's right to do sure. it. Sure. However... There's a way to do it, and there's a way not to do it. So, <laughs> And basically, the deletion of life or friendship or anything else, you know what? Are you done? Wait for it. Oh. That's the cry. Oh. It just kills me. It just kills me because a lot of these people that I have these arguments with are highly intelligent people, and some of them aren't. 
Yes. Yes. The problem I have is it's usually eight times out of ten the most intelligent people that throw the biggest fucking fit when you don't agree with them. And it's the the other two that are not so intelligent. Look, you might be intelligent at certain things. You might know how to build a car from the ground using two toothpicks, a pack of gum, and a Pepsi can and make a NASCAR-style vehicle, and you're a genius for it. But some of those people don't have the thinking or the oratory capacity. For those of you who don't know what oratory means, it means talking and communicating. You don't have that particular part of you that's intelligent or well-versed, okay? There are certain things I'm absolutely ignorant on, and there are certain things that I am absolutely intelligent on. I don't pretend to be a genius about everything. So when somebody can come and give me knowledge that I didn't have before, I welcome it. Yes, I agree. With, I completely agree with Facebook you on that rant one, over. I'm it's, fucking done, dude. You can we. I think we've hit on this like a, 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 a bazillion times. Facebook, unfortunately, can be used so well, but it also at the same time can be just the worst thing. It needs to be about twenty percent cooler. Probably about forty percent cooler. But <laughs> nice. <laughs> that being said, people people can take things obviously a little too far. This is where you need to, what we said before, go onto that Facebook page, click onto your own personal profile, go back and just look at some of the shit that you posted. They even have this thing where it's like, hey, two years ago, three yeah. years ago, you posted this. I love that. Yeah. If it, if it makes you smile, if it makes you chuckle, you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. If you sit there and you think to yourself, man, was I an ass when I wrote that? Change. Sure. Change. Ma make a little change. You can do it. You can do it. You know what I'm saying? Like... It's not hard. Right. It really isn't But at hard. no point in time, and I'm going to, I will say this till the day I die, at no point in time will you tell me how I should think, how I should live, what I should put on my Facebook or on my podcast or anywhere else, unless you are willing to come to my house, take one of my several bills that come in and pay for them. Because then and only then do you have the right to tell me how to live my life. Exactly. Fuck yeah. Fuck you, Facebook warriors. So Fuck you. I'm going to, I'm going to personally go out and attack uh one of our listeners yes andrew uh andrew de carlos yep. so i i i i went online and i am purchasing tickets for october 23rd game of the minnesota vikings versus the philadelphia eagles yes and the cheapest tickets i could find are nosebleed sections for 90 dollars a pop not including the taxes and all the other ones so parking etc well no that, this is just for the tickets so they right they, right they it's charge not, you a it's, it's fee just for the seat Right, right. So they charge you a fee, and then they charge you the the what do they call it? Like the the labor tax, the or ticket tax, the ticket, convenience all the stuff, fee. Convenience fee. There you go. That's for them because to you're buying hold it, yes. the ticket for if you. If you're will calling or you're having the ticket sent to you, it's a convenience. It's a fee. convenience if you, fee. If you print them yourself, you don't pay the convenience fee. Right, right. It's, exactly. It's all. It's a sham for beginning to end. It is. You got to You got to really check. So regardless, you take all that in. I'm going to end up spending about one hundred and fifteen dollars per ticket to have. Each one, so it's three tickets. Me and my boys to go see this game. So you're looking at three forty-five, right out. Of just the for the game, yeah. Yep. Just for the just just to see the game. Andrew, who the fuck are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> really, you guys, you guys haven't even, you guys haven't even gotten so much as close to. Oh uh, no, I can't say you got close because the Patriots and you did had Don McNabb puking on. That was ten years ago. Even ten better yard than line. Ten years ago. Ten uh, the ten yard line in the puke fest. The closest thing besides that you guys have gotten to is the Lord of the Rings renewal of the marathon that's been on TNT, and you guys just cont continuously <laughs> watch that shit. Seriously though, man, it's Minnesota Vikings against your team, and you're charging me a hundred and five dollars. And and let me let me just go on record as to saying I'm pretty sure Philly is the the brotherhood lovey blahzy blah. On the but, north end. But where I'm going to be sitting, I guarantee you there's going to be less than friendly people up there when I'm rocking my oh, purple. Oh, uh, let me. Oh, wow. No, that's a great point because before we went on, I told you about going to see the Redskins and the Falcons in D.C. We are in the last row of FedEx Field, so much so that I could turn around and look in between the chain link fence and I could see where I parked my car. Now, I'm sitting. There's probably two other Falcon fans in this whole section. Two. They go up 14 to nothing real early. The Redskins were just putting it on them, and I'm catching shit. And I shut up because I know, I understand I'm in D.C. Mm -hmm. I could get shot. I could get killed. I could get killed if I did this at Gillette Stadium with the Patriots. Or any, oh, yeah. When you're the enemy walking in, yeah, yeah. you're basically wearing a target on your back. Now, they come out of the half. First two, first two possessions the Falcons have, they score. It's 14 all. 
First play of the next drive. This is three drives in a row. Warwick Dunn takes the ball, 78 yards for a touchdown. And I see people dressed in maroon and gold stand up, and they start walking down. And this is where the beer and the balls start to come up. Where are you guys going? You, I didn't leave after 14 nothing. You're only down by four. What, what, the, what the fuck, guys? Come yeah. on. Nope, they're just leaving. Now I get in the parking lot. I'm walking out. The weed, I think we took that game 24-14, if I remember correctly. Walking through the parking lot, and I'm walking by these tailgates where on the way in, I'm catching shit. Now, these are guys with their head between them. Good game, man. Good game. Glad you got to see it. Mm, yeah. Really, you want a beer? Mm, good game. I had four beers on the way to the car. I didn't park all that far away. I can see that in D.C. I've seen it at Gillette Stadium. You're not going to see that in Philly. Oh, hell no. And I'm not, don't, I'm not downing the people of Philly. Look, if, if there's one thing I can say about the fans of Philadelphia is that you're passionate. Same as Fenway Park. Same as Yankee Stadium. There are very few stadiums. See, that one, that one uh, Philadelphia fan that's on YouTube all the time. Oh, yeah. One who's just going off. He's mm-hmm. not, uh, dude, it's, he's... Passionate. And there are not a lot of sports cities that have that same kind of passion as Philly, New York, Boston. Detroit is one of them. Yes. Even though their football team has sucked forever... They're passionate about it. Cleveland is the same way. If you've ever been to a Cleveland Browns game, you know you are in hostile territory, even if you are a Browns fan. Passion. But in Philadelphia, you are not going to get those guys like I did in Washington. You're going to catch shit. Even if you're winning, it's going to be an excuse fest, and it's not going to come from good, like Andrew. Andrew and I have made bets for years on Falcons, Eagles when they play. We always pay each other up. We always have a handshake. There's never an excuse. But you will hear it because 80% of the people that are sitting in there, they'd be like, oh, man, well, if it wasn't for that one play where you guys held, we'd have been up by 17. Yeah, Let me see if I got this right, guys. And Des Bryant did catch the ball. Yeah. It, it's on film, man. It's on film. <laughs> Clean catch. And I'm not a Cowboy fan by any stretch of the imagination. I wish they would have rolled that bus and not killed the uh, the drivers. I wish the team would have just rolled over. No, I don't mean I don't wish death on the Cowboys, but I wish serious injury. Look, it's it, it, it's on film. Des Bryant made the catch. I'm not a Cowboy fan. I don't like a lot of things that happen. I don't like that right now they're being picked to win their division early on. Well, it's Colin Cowherd. You have they to, always do that. Yeah, they always do that. And they end up eight and eight. Look, stop making excuses. When you lose, you lose with dignity, and when you win, you win with humility. And after the humility is over, then you start razzing your buddy who roots for the other team. Much like we did when we watched the college game. Exactly. I gave you your shit for about a week and a half, and then it was over. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. And the next day, when the Vikings walked into Atlanta, opened their fridge, ate their food, fucked their wives, and left, and left us with the losing end of the stick, you gave me my shit, it was over. Win with humility. I guarantee. And I'm throwing this out there. I, I hope you guys win. But if you don't. It's going to be a long walk to. The oh, road. I know. <laughs> it's going to be a long, long walk. walk to my fucking to my rental. Yeah. So speaking of the Cowboys, make sure it's uh, their newest. Eagles, make sure it's Eagles colors so they don't burn it and roll it over. <laughs> well, I'll have insurance for it. <laughs> do whatever the fuck they want with it. Uh, back to the Cowboys. Sure. Cowboys, uh, brand new running back Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott. Elliott, yes, from the mighty Ohio State Buckeye. I hate that he's with them now. He might be a Buckeye, but let let me just say this. What he's doing for that school right now is nothing short of just giving you guys a bad name. Oh, yeah. You get – I understand you're excited because you – as much as we clown on them, they are one of the most known they're NFL teams. They're one of the best, teams. most storied franchises in the history of the NFL. And they're in Texas. It's, Let's – I mean mm-hmm. – the home Texas state football of is, football. Exactly. exactly. So They could have named the state football. Nobody would look, nobody blink an eye. No, they'd love it. They would have loved it. They would have been all over that. Where are you from? Houston football. Oh, yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> I love football, man. <laughs> that place is a little hot in the summertime, but I'll tell you what. You go down there in the, in, in around the wintertime, it's just nice. Football is 68 perfect. 68 degrees. It's beautiful. It's perfect around that time. Now, well, when he first gets in there, he's excited. He sleeps with this girl. She ends up snapchapping him and gets all his face all over the place. Whatever. Hey, have fun, kid. You right. know? You just got... But be careful. Have fun, but be careful. Oh, of course. So now he's got this same girl. And this is four weeks later, five weeks later, about that. And now 
he's beating the bejesus out of her. Allegedly. Alleged. Alleged. You got to say it. You do got to say alleged, but I mean, come on. He's man. a cowboy now. I don't have to say it, but I'm trying to be. I, I know, do. Objective. I agree. I agree. But these, when you, when people really, you know, like your lawyers, allegedly, like, you almost, you almost want to slap people for being like, really, dude. Oh no, I'm with you on that. <laughs> you know, like I understand you got to say it, but let's be honest, like. Alleged me, my ass. Mm -hmm. You see the size of his hands? You see the bruises on that fucking lady's neck? Who the fuck do you think put it there? Her cat? That goes back to something we talked about earlier, <laughs> about abuse. You can say, and uh, again, there are ladies out there like this young lady who was with Ezekiel Elliott who can claim abuse, show abuse. And, there are some, and, and to those women, I feel for you. But there are some women who will go out there and say, he was abusive. Really? What do you got to show? Mm-hmm. Really? Right, exactly. Really? Exactly. Well, like we said also before, mental abuse, you really can't show it. There's no... No, you can't, but you also have to take into account, is it, again, and I hate people who do this, and I've known enough people in my life that I love and, and some that I don't like mm -hmm. who will use the fact that they got into an argument and somebody said, oh, you're being a bitch as abuse. Right. That's no, I, not even close. I get that. I get that. And you know what? <sighs> a bitch... Bitch is such a such a such a little word. It's almost a transitive word now. You can use it right, in a situation. Right. But Yo, what some, up, bitch? But some people, it actually has deeper meaning. You know sure. what I'm saying? No, like I maybe get it. maybe that word is a trigger word. Per perhaps. You know what I'm saying? It could be. It could be. And by all means, that could be considered a, a form of verbal mm -hmm. abuse, especially if you know that that's a trigger word for that person, and sure, you're maliciously going out. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But we're talking about physical, oh, yeah. and real abuse. Going back to this young lady and Ezekiel Elliott, I'm going to start with Zeke, and we'll work my way down. And yes. I'm not saying yes. that the, the yes. girl is the bottom. We're going to save the best for last. Oh, no, there's more than just her. Right. Now, obviously, you learn nothing in your four years of college. You learn and, and from Ohio State, number where one. Where Urban Meyer now, don't listen, play that shit. Right, Jim exactly. Trestle didn't play that shit. These guys are my rivals. I know the ins and outs of this college as well as I know my own college that I root for. Mm -hmm. And they hold the same standards, the exact same standards. When you are on that program, it is a no, no bullshit, no hassle. You fuck up and you are gone. Yep. I don't care how good you are. Can anybody say Maurice Claret? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Very good point. Now, obviously, he didn't learn anything in four years of college. Obviously, he didn't learn anything in the NFL Rookie Symposium where they bring them all in and they say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. This is the code of conduct. We expect you, unless your name right. is Brady, we expect you to stand up to this code of conduct and here are the penalties if you screw up. Obviously, he either missed it or he was playing Pokemon Go during the NFL Rookie Symposium because he obviously didn't learn a fucking thing. Yes. Here's a guy who, in my closet right now, and you have seen me wear it, is an Ezekiel Elliott jersey. I think that guy is a fantastic player. It hurt my feelings when Dallas picked him up, but Zeke doesn't have the stroke to say, um, you know, I really want this other team to pick me up. You know, No, he got picked by the team he got picked by. Now you go do your best for that team. What is not the best for that team is for you before you have even hit a blade of grass, before you have even touched the ball once as a professional in a live game to screw up like this. Yes. You, sir. Not, not since Johnny Manziel. Right? <laughs> you, sir, are an asshole. Now, this, this is, these are two incredible players, dude. Johnny Manziel is a phenomenal. You don't get a nickname like Johnny Football if you suck. And Ezekiel Elliott is a fucking explosive. I mean, we're talking about this uh, with the, the Sean Gurley kid. Uh, I know who you're Sean? talking about. I just can't think of his. From the, from the Rams. Yeah. He's supposed to be the next big thing. He's like Adrian Peterson, Barry Sanders, and Walter Payton all wrapped into one huge package. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Ezekiel is... Pretty damn close to that fucking package. Yeah. Pretty pretty damn close. He's oh, a yeah. big, heavy, cutty running Wide back. shoulders, long legs. He can do downhill running with his head down and bust a line. Or, as you've seen, he can do the shake and bake Barry Sanders gimmick yes. and, and cut through a just line get like people, nobody's Not only business. that, just get people. When, when you shake that much where someone goes, and, and they literally lose their hips. Dude. That misdirection <laughs> is the difference between a five-yard gain and a 55-yard gain. Oh, that touchdown. little half-second yes. of misdirection. Exactly. 
what he's done is retarded. Now let's move. I want to move on to the young lady. Yes. I understand that young ladies are not all of them. Here we go again. I have to clarify because don't want any butthurt keyboard warriors coming after me. Young ladies, young ladies are enamored by money, fame, looks. Um, you know, they say, why can't I find a good guy? Cause you're checking out all the assholes. Okay. This young lady was enamored by the fame. And Ezekiel Elliott, I don't think he's a good-looking guy. I mean, I don't judge gentlemen that often. But if I had to, I would, I'm looking up his picture now as I speak to you. Um, I don't think Ezekiel Elliott's all that good-looking of a guy. I have his picture right here. Okay, yeah, he's a, he's a decent-looking fella. Um, you are enamored by the fame. You, you start up these conversations. Now you're going into some sort of a physical relationship. I don't Whether or not you thought it was going to go far... I don't know, but you have to know, and I think most normal people already know that a celebrity already thinks in the back of their mind that the rules do not apply to them, and if that's the case, you should know going in that there is going to be some level of no accountability for Ezekiel Elliott. Why? As I just said, he's a celebrity, and celebrities already believe that the rules don't apply to them. It's already in the back of his mind. Brady. Brady, yes, exactly. The rules don't apply. Hillary Clinton, the rules don't apply to me. So you already know this going in. So now you guys have a little tiff, whatever. He gets physical. I am very sorry that had to happen. I do not condone it. I do not stand here and go, yeah, Zeke, you know, smack that bitch. No, that's not what I'm, I'm saying. I don't know what your culpability is. But you already know that as a celebrity, he truly believes there's no accountability on his part. Absolutely, dude. I think that's that's just society as a general. Mm-hmm. You know, it's there are regular folk that think they they're not held accountable. I, uh, I I I did a post last night just to be silly. Um, if you guys aren't friends, obviously on Facebook, you you missed it because it wasn't a looking jabroni post, but it was uh, a personal post. I'm wondering. If and I, I wrote, it. yeah, you did because you commented. Oh, did I? And awesome. I wrote, uh, just going to go on record with this one. Uh, I don't think the world could handle me if I was famous. <laughs> <laughs> we would be awesome famous people. Now, yeah, exactly. That's what you said. <laughs> of course, the immortal is like, oh, God, we can't handle you guys now. It's now, hard to. <laughs> I say this all the time, and it's like I, I, I bring up Eric again um, because, like I said, we just recently had a, call, you know, a few conversations. I said the same thing to him. Um, with fame comes this a lot of a lot of open doors mm-hmm. sort of say you know what i'm saying um and with these open doors people tend to lose where they where they came from and who they are you know what i'm saying it's how you handle it after that 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 it happens and it's how you how you guy how you take it mm-hmm. with stride you know what i'm saying i would love to say that we get to that point, and I, I and I and I don't get bit by the bug. Even if it, even but. if it were, <laughs> even if it, and I, I'm going to quantify my statement by saying I don't want my privacy invaded. But it would be nice if the world was a reality show and there were cameras everywhere. So, and again, I spoke about this a few minutes ago. I don't know what this young lady's culpability is in the matter. Um, was it Ezekiel Elliott being a jacked up jackass and thinking the rules don't apply to me? Did she? start something did she hit him first what whatever the case is there's always three sides of the story there's your side my side and the truth a lot of these you know goes to he said she said i would like i would love to be a fly on the wall when it happened my my problem with this is look at the damage that she has and look at the damage that he has i mean oh yeah what could she have possibly done to him that made him want to put that much bodily harm you know what I'm saying? Like, oh no, I agree with that. I I I, I totally when, get it. It's like when 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 somebody is down, most people are like, okay, that's it, it's over. But some people have they don't have this switch. They don't have this thing in their brain that tells them that's enough. They're like, well, you're down. Let me hit you again. Yeah, that's bullshit. Let me hit you again. You know what I'm saying? Oh, now you're crying because I hit you four times. Let me hit you because you're crying. Now that goes you know, back to when we were talking about the cops a couple weeks ago. The first two, maybe. The next thirty-eight? No, not so. Exactly, much. exactly. There's a certain thing you got to, and that, and now we have 
what's going on now. I mean, oh, we yeah. just had another cop getting shot. Yep, I got the, we had I got that thing on right fucking here. social media the other day where somebody said, kill everything that's in blue that isn't a mailman. Are you fucking serious? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Number one, why would you post something that stupid on social media? Of course they fucking found the guy and, he, you know, he's dead and everybody's like, that was his right to post it. No, it's not. It goes back to what I said earlier. You have the right to free speech. You know, you have to know how to use it. Exactly. If you post on your Facebook page, I plan on assassinating the president. Um, you're pretty expect much expect to have people knocking on your oh, door well, within the next couple hours. All right, just let's just put it that way. All right, you can't say something that's stupid, and you can't do these things that these people are doing. And not expect the repercussions mm-hmm. from it. This is exactly. Um, there was a video, and, I, and I'm going to have to find it, and I'm going to post it on, the, on our on our uh, Facebook page. This lady was, I, th- I want to say it was in uh, Rowell, Rowell, South Carolina, one okay. of those South Carolinas. The cop pulls this lady over for a, for a stop. Right? She's still in her car. She proceeds. The bitch to st- did the donuts. Did she proceeds to do the donuts? Oh to do the God. donuts. The guy recording the video is like, will you just shoot the bitch already? She's going to kill somebody. Yep. The cop is like, you know, doing every, I think, obviously, with all the shit that was going on, he... He's trying to keep his hands clean. Exactly. Now, the we minute, have But wait, this, I'm gonna get, before you go on, the minute she started doing donuts in that town square... Thank you. Fire off around. Get her in Thank the shoulder, you. get her in the leg. I'm sorry. Take out a tire. I take out no, a tire. It's exactly right. Take out a tire. Don't put one between her eyes because then we're going to have the whole uproar again. No, at the, the minute she starts taking liberties, and I, you understand what I mean by taking liberties and making herself mm-hmm. a danger to the general mm-hmm. public. And she was. Fuck your freedom. She you hit are three now. Cars. She hit the police cruiser yep. twice. The cop is just sitting Didn't back. Didn't she roll her car at the end? That's that I was going to say. Finally. It wasn't the police that stepped up. It was karma. Karma said, fuck you, bitch. She ends up hitting a fucking um, a fire hydrant, yep. flips and rolls the car, and everybody's like, good, that's what you get. Like, you know, and, and she's screaming. The cops are, like, on her back and, like, you know, cuffing and stuff, and she's screaming for her rights. It's a show. Bitch, you lost your rights the minute you started doing the donuts and breaking the law right in front of the fucking officer. And then when you mm-hmm. struck the police car... Dude, that's an assault with a deadly weapon. Mm-hmm. I don't care how you fucking slice it. You're lucky you didn't get shot. Mm-hmm. And then you have things like this. Right right out of San Diego. Uh, police, here, the first line of the story, and I want people to remember this. All you cop haters, listen to the first line. And not only that, a, listen to the two extremes that we just explained. Mm-hmm. This one right here, and now you go on to this. A police officer, a father of two, is dead. And another cop is injured after they were shot in San Diego Thursday night. One suspect has been taken into police custody. Police were searching for the additional suspects. The shooting happened after two officers, both assigned to the gang unit, made a routine traffic stop around 11 p.m. local time, which would have made it like 2 in the morning here. The officers called for emergency cover and were shot multiple times. Okay. I've been in a traffic stop recently. And no time did I try to shoot this cop. I didn't know I did wrong because I was ignorant. It was an exit I never took before. I didn't see the sign that said, no turn on red. Guess what? I got popped. Yep. Big deal. The one officer died from the gunshot wound. The second officer who's in critical condition is also a husband and a father. Is in surgery at the time of this report. San Diego police said Friday morning that he is expected to survive. Police did not say, as of this writing Friday morning, if the officers were ambushed. Okay. Let's take this into consideration. Let's say you work at first place I can think of because I applied for a job there recently, Lowe's. You work at Lowe's. Your job is uh, cashier. You're the cashier, and people bring up their power tools and their drill bits and their Mm -hmm. lumber and whatnot, and you scan it out. That's your job. You are doing your job. And somebody comes up, and you scan the piece of lumber that was on the shelf, and it says two ninety nine per 2 by 4 and you scan it, doot, and it comes up three ninety nine. Now you have to think of a solution how to make it happen. Would you want Johnny Jackass, who just got overcharged by a buck on his piece of lumber, and let's say he has 200 pieces of lumber there, to whip out a gun and shoot you? The answer is no. No. Let's say you work at a clothing store. You have a nice jacket. Unfortunately, it's not the size that the man or woman wants. You go in the back and you say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. We seem to be 
plumb out of that size? Do you want that person to whip out a gun and shoot you on sight? The answer is no. So why? Why? And I'm speaking only to the anti-cop faction right now because then I'm going to talk to the cop faction because I have a big problem with some of the things I've seen. Again, going back to Facebook Warriors. If you're doing your job, I don't care if you work at Wendy's. I don't care if you work in a hospital I don't, it, or a cop or whatever. You're there to do a job, and you do the job to the best of your ability. You are not expected to take a bullet. I know cops are different. They know that every day when they go out there again, my dad was a cop for 30 years, you expect to go out and do your job. You are aware of the fact that every time you walk out that door, it's the last time. What you don't think is that a routine traffic stop is going to cost you your life. A gentleman friend of mine by the name of Bill Snyder lost his father, a Groton cop. If you've ever driven down by EB, you'll see these signs that say, um, I think it was a sergeant, Sergeant William Snyder Jr. Mm-hmm. Memorial Highway. Because on that stretch of road, he, a routine traffic stop cost him his life when the driver shot him. Not cool. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you that are out there and you're posting, you know, shoot everything in blue, I hope that goes for everybody. And when I say that, I'm showing you how ignorant your statement is. See a guy walking down the street, nice bright blue Detroit Lions T-shirt, shoot that mototherfucker. Cowboys fucking you. See a Cowboys jersey, shoot Shoot that that motherfucker. motherfucker. Toronto Blue Jay fan, shoot that motherfucker. Boston Red Sox fan, shoot that that motherfucker. Yankees. Kevin Harvick, bright blue t-shirt. Shoot that motherfucker. Maybe you're wearing a Pokemon shirt that happens to be colored blue. Shoot that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Shoot everything blue that isn't the mailman. Got a Fuck Squirtle you. t-shirt. Shoot that motherfucker Shoot that right motherfucker. between the eyes. Exactly. <laughs> now let's move. Oh, the Pepsi delivery guy can get shot too. Oh, he, not he, that I believe that. Yeah, no, you guys he, know I don't he, believe that. He delivers refreshing blue, beverages. Delicious. Don't forget. Yes. Don't forget, man. He, he, they said everything in blue, but the mailman. You know, so like Pepsi's I'm, in it. Pepsi's in it. Uh, that's delivery. Oh, Come on, okay. man. That's delivery. All right. <laughs> Pepsi lives matter. Now to the cops, or the cop sympathizers, or the cop supporters, which I happen to be one. There is no excuse in the world for some of the things that have happened. Not all of the things. Again, let's take certain things out of the mix. The guy who got pulled over in New Hampshire yeah. after the two-state run, and he, for whatever reason, he gave himself up, and you brought it up correctly. What, I've given myself up, no matter what the situation is. If you whack him one or two times, <laughs> it's I adrenaline. Reset. I said yes. at that time, I said, you know what? <laughs> the guy himself, with everything he that he went through, a right, he, he kind of would... I'll tell you what, if I did that, when I do finally give myself up, I'm accepting a couple shots. Yeah. I know it's going to happen. Not accepting 38. I, I piss these guys off. I, I expect to get roughed up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But no, when you continuously get beat upon beat and pounded, and like we said, that one officer, I mean, he literally lunge punched. I mm-hmm. mean, and let's, UFC style. Exactly. When you are like running into punching somebody, that's a lot of force, man. That's a lot of force. That's a lot of unnecessary there's no, force. There's no reason a cop should go full Roman Reigns Superman punch no. into a suspect. There, there is none, especially on and, the ground unless, un, yeah, and on coughed the ground. up. Let's, Un, <laughs> unless the guy is swinging a bat at you or has a weapon, then go full on fucking Superman yeah, punch. Yeah, absolutely. I don't care. Now, I, as I said, a lot of these internet warriors have been in force in the last couple of weeks. I have a lot of friends who, current and former police, and I'd say it's a good 50-50. 50% are like, yeah, if you, if, you're, if you fuck up and you're a cop, you should be held accountable. And there are some former police officers and current police officers on my list who are saying, no, he's doing the right thing. He, 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 them beating that kid or shooting that, no, motherfucker, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing I just said. If you, police officer or former police officer, have a child and they work as, I don't know, roadside construction. We see them everywhere. It's Connecticut. We're Mm -hmm. constantly in construction. And they got that little sign, slow, stop, slow, stop. And you decide, I don't have to listen to that. I'm just going to drive through. Boom, kid gets hit by a car. He's dead Mm -hmm. because of a choice that somebody else made. Do orange lives matter now? They always oh, yeah. matter. Yeah. And, you know what? I'm done with it. Every life matters. I understand. And I said it before, and I'll say it again on this show. I understand Black Lives Matter because right now they seem to be the ones that are taking. It's the, the ones that are in jeopardy of, right exactly. now. Yes, absolutely. And now on the same token with the cops, the Blue Lives Matter. Yes, they do because they're just out doing a job. 
Are you going to have fired up jackasses who don't know how to conduct themselves like a normal human being? Yes, you do. Is that indicative of every fucker that puts on that uniform? No, it's not. Stop the ignorance. Start it with you. Educate yourself and stop being a pissed off jackass who thinks I can do what well, I how want. How about and this? How about this? Let me let me take let me I told take you that I was same be hot cop. This right. week. I told you. Let me take that same cop. Mm-hmm. Give him a 15 year old son. Who has a five finger discount problem, mm-hmm. right? Now that very same kid goes into the wrong store and steals from the wrong security guy who is just, you Jacked know what? Up, pissed off asshole. Exactly. So now all of a sudden, this guy gets fucking hit a couple times, hit a couple more times. Does that make it okay, Mr. Officer? Because, you know, he felt like his life was in jeopardy and this guy, this guy was, you know, stealing his property. No, it doesn't. And that's exactly the point we're trying to make here. You wouldn't want that to happen to you in any case, form over example. No, we're not trying to say fucking police, like you said, you, you, you put on the gun, you put on the badge, you know, shit could happen at any given moment. Hell, you get a feeling that the freaking Steve Irwin and that guy, when he straps on that shit, He's fucking with dangerous animals. Mm-hmm. He's pretty damn certain that huh. something could go wrong. How'd that end for him? Something did go wrong. Yes. Exactly. It's when you choose the job that you want to do, you get paid for it. You have your insurances. You have everything else. If it's not something that you want to do, then leave. Find a new career choice. Please do yourself a favor and everybody else around you. If it's not something that you think you can fucking handle, don't. Go work at fucking McDonald's. Go work as a five and dime security officer at 7-Eleven. If it means that you have to be less of an asshole on the street, it'll make the fucking world a better mm-hmm. place. We don't need people like you on the fucking beat. We don't want people like you on the beat. And we sure as fuck don't want to be training any more people like the ones that we have mm-hmm. out there right now. After the Rodney King gimmick that happened, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but you know, that's like my catchphrase. No, it After is. After the Rodney it King is. thing in the early 90s, bunch of friends of mine and I were sitting around talking as the trial is going on before the whole not guilty in the L.A. riots. First of all, that was bullshit. They were all guilty. Mm -hmm. It's on fucking video. Um, It was the first time I had ever really heard the expression anger management. And it was one of my friends who was in college. He's home for the summer. And he's like, you know what they should have? They should have mandatory anger management classes for police. Whether or not you actually need it, much like the NFL Rookie Symposium. It's- or like sexual harassment. For us, right. didn't you go through a sexual harassment training? And- Are you a sexual har- – you know, do you have cases of mass sexual harassment? No. Nope. No. Were you offended at any time when you were taking that course? No. Because Even though it- you had to take it, were you offended because you weren't into a sexual harassment? No, because it no. broadened my intelligence. Thank you. And this is the problem. People see anger management. And all of a sudden, it's an attack to them. Well, I don't need an anger management. I'm not angry. This is bullshit. Why You're the angry fuck right do I now talking it? about it, Jack? Exactly. Exactly. Just shut up. Take the goddamn test. Go through it. Because you know what? Now you have accountability. The best point that you brought up was, I don't need it. It's usually the people that say they don't need it that generally need it. Right. Exactly. I don't need to go to therapy. Yeah. I'm not crazy. You're yeah, you stupid. Aren't. You need to get these people on the streets in therapy. That's what you need to have in therapy. Mm-hmm. Not me. I'm part of the solution, not part of the problem. I don't need to listen. Yeah, you do. So with that being said, oh. it is time. <laughs> and for those of you who are looking for a new job, my top 10 list is going to help you out with that. Oh, well, geez. Before we, well, you know what? No, while we go into that, because I think I did it last week, I'm going to do it again. It's the final this week's top 10 list is brought to you by Sublime Inc. Tattoo Parlor in Groton, Connecticut, 577 Route 12. The number is 860-445-4200. Go down and see Falcon Dave Kovalik, Dana Batts, Justin Furr, or if you're feeling extra angry at the cops and you want to get that fuck the police tattoo, not that I think he'd give you one, you can go see Dave the Nightmare Kruger. Tell him that the Loki Jabroni Show sent you, especially if you see Falcon Dave, because his hands are oiled up and ready for that butt rub right now. He loves rubbing butts. What do you got for us? So here we go. I have decided to give you a top 10 list of the worst summer jobs ever. So if you guys think that your job sucks right now. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to write a couple of these down because I need a job. Let me tell you. Okay. So my honorable mention for the top 10 worst summer jobs is... The Pokemon Go Sweat Wiper. That's right. You actually walk around following these 
frugal Pokemon Go worshiping guys, and you wipe the sweat off their brow for them. <laughs> Can I tell you something? <laughs> You've seen where the immortal beloved lives, and right down the hill there is the Norgetown Green. And I had a free day, so I took Emma down. We took a walk. We had our water bottle. We had the dog. And you have no idea in this one two-block section of Norwich how many people's eyes are buried in their phone and darting left and right looking for these imaginary fucking creatures. I don't begrudge you if you play the game, but my Lord, when a pack of you are looking like zombies— Oh, some of them too. Yeah, let me it was tell a beautiful you day too. Enjoy the sunlight. Hey, at least they're out. I agree with that. They, they could be chasing Pokemon's on their goddamn. They, it's the less controller. time. It's it's less time they spend yelling at me on the internet for having yeah. oh, an opinion. I mean, it's funny though because you know they they they're they're freaking their tans are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> they got redness on the back of their neck All and right. the front of their neck is white from bending down. Number 10, you could be a jock strap adjuster. Nobody wants to do that job. Mm, Let me tell I you can't what. think of any. Number nine, a professional bowling chaperone. That's right. You take away your people and drop them off at the bowling alley, a.k.a. mom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, you could be a pit bull tickler fluffer. That's, uh, yeah, you got to get them all riled up for their dog fights. <laughs> I heard, um, I heard, uh, What's his name? Vic there was looking for a couple fluffer it's ticklers. It's quite possible. <laughs> Number seven, you could be Stephen Hawkins' living chair. Could you imagine? <laughs> you were physically have to. This is one of the days we need a camera. <laughs> Number six. Wait, wait. <laughs> you like that living chair. So you're, you're expecting someone to deform, like sit and look like a and chair? Just be like a chair. For st- and you imagine, because he's all over the place. So you'd have to. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Imagine how sweaty that thing would be during the. You know, I, I feel. <laughs> I feel terrible for Stephen Hawking. What a brilliant mind, and you know he's all twisted, and his body's just raging against him. Yep. I feel so terrible for that guy, but I, I would feel worse for the human chair. See, see, that's worse than the human centipede. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send you a picture when we're done. You can sh- you, I'll let you share it on the page. Look what Jabroni sent me. Number six, you could be an Atlanta Braves ticket scalper. Ooh. That would be rough right <laughs> now for you, buddy. Let me tell you. You could be the personal scratcher, number five, to Jared Fogle. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. sure he has one of those already. I bet you he does. Nasty Nate. Number four, you could be the understudy to the Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Number three, you could be a hornet groomer. I mean, okay. it, it, it could happen. Very could. dangerous. If very, you can catch them, you can groom very, them. Very dangerous. Stay away from the ass end. Number two, you could be the staff psychologist to ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's, that's a terrible job. That's man. some good shit right there. That's a terrible job. <laughs> and number one. The number one worst summer job that you could have right now would be Rosie O'Donnell's living pool float. <laughs> You'd have a cup holder. You better, you better be a big person to do that job. She's a big bitch. I was going to say, you might be a pool sink. Oh, my Lord. But you could. You could have that. Fan. Ass. <laughs> The crowd's still going. It's beautiful. So, 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 just keep in mind, guys, that if you know if you think that your summer job is bad, you could have one of those jobs. Oh man, <laughs> Stephen Hawkins' <laughs> living chair. <laughs> going to hell for that. One. I'm about to whip somebody's ass. Oh, I'm about to whip somebody's ass. <laughs> I can't take it. Love it, man. I so love it. So through the laughter, if you haven't already heard, go to mm. www.patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Loki and Jabroni, L-O-K-I-A-N-D-J-A-B-R-O-N-I. Please donate to the show. If you can do a one-time donation, great. If you can do a monthly donation, even better. Mm-hmm. There are two slots for investors. We will produce content for you. We are looking to upgrade our equipment and make the show better for you. Not exactly. for us, for you. There's this badass little camera that... uh that our boy has been showing us as far mm-hmm. as, um, you know, Mr. Eddie Jakes. And uh, he's he's been really good about this, mm-hmm. showing us some really good stuff. And we actually, we get this going. It's going to be, we're going to be able to do a lot more live shows. We'll do and, live every week if we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Another way to help out is if you go to our Facebook page, and I'll share it on my page. Mike always shares it on his page, is the Amazon link. 
You go to the Amazon link. You do your normal shopping. You check out. Mm-hmm. You'll have your sweet Star Wars. It doesn't shit, cost you any extra money. Your American Girl doll, right? It, nothing it extra. No hidden fees or hidden charges. Extra. All that happens is the little proceeds that you clicked it from going from our page lets them know that hey, they found it from here. So all you got to do is uh, you know give give it give it back to them. Yep. And they, they shoot they, a little bit back to us to help. Cover the production <coughs> costs that we want to use. And I'll tell you upgrade. what, after a couple thousand of those, man, you know, it, it, it adds up. And then we can use some of that and pick up that new computer and <clears throat> get our own little setup down here. And exactly. Be golden, man. Be golden Colorado. Better for you, better for us. Now, I do have a small announcement. And I, I, I kind of wanted to wait on this, but the show is going to be, how do I put this? It's going to happen. I am uh, in talks right now with a certain gentleman. You've heard us talk about his son. That's right. We are, in a, we are in talks right now to have Joe Laurinaitis. If you've never heard that name before, you've been living under a rock. He is the father of James Laurinaitis, currently with the Dirtbag New Orleans Saints, formerly <laughs> of the St. Louis, now L.A. Rams, formerly of the Ohio State Buckeyes, but his dad, Joe Laurinaitis, you may remember as Road Warrior Animal from the Legion of Doom, from WCW and the WWE, one of the greatest, most decorated tag teams of all time. It is great to have just even the these LOD, talks with baby. Mm-hmm. The LOD. Um, one of my one of my favorite moments from the LA, uh, the, from the Legion of Doom, kind of newer school at uh, the WWF Attitude Era. We were just changing to WWE at that point, I think. Um, Ahmed Johnson mm-hmm. comes out with the Legion of Doom. Oh, with the gear. And- with the, the whole gear, and his was gold, and theirs was black and yep. white, and it just looked so fucking oh, bad. Yeah. Watching ass, them dude. at um, Wemb- Wembley Stadium yes, at yes. SummerSlam with the gold and the black, uh, with the Harleys. Fucking it was badass. Fantastic. They, they, were, they, they, were, they were the original bad boys. The original bad boy crew, the Doomsday device, still oh, to this man. day is being used. Did, I, I got mean, a question for you. Did you ever, with your buddies, hoist your buddy the pool? in the pool? Yep. All the time. <laughs> Come All on, man. Time, hoist bro. me up. I want to do Doomsday. <laughs> All right. Well, fuck it. Let's do it. And you're in a pool, so it's semi-safe. It was great. Um, always. Always did. I'm that. excited. Um, <clears throat> tried calling Joe yesterday. I didn't get through. I'm going to call him again this afternoon. He's willing and able. I was so excited I sent you the screenshot of our Facebook mm-hmm. chat because Joe is a friend of mine on Facebook. Yes, it's the real Joe. Before you even start, yes, it's the real Joe. I have his fucking phone number if you want to see it. Not that I'm going to show it to you. I'll show it to you, Mike. Ah, but- yeah. And we have uh, we have our little Lucha right down the road here, too, that we're trying to, uh, ah, that's right. trying to get him in the works, too. So um, we have... Some stuff set up for you guys. We really do. We're, we're really looking forward to uh, doing a lot of these things for you guys. But we need the support. We need your help at Patreon. We do. This is probably one of the best things you can help out. Um, the Immortal Sheet. Yep. Was she, the very she, first monthly donation. Not only that. I mean, let, let's be honest. Nobody can really like just give out as much as they'd like to but she was one of the first she was like you know what i can go without my starbucks for a couple months here just to to make sure that these boys get what they need and look at and and i'll throw i'll throw lady jay into the mix too they give up these two especially give up more than anybody else and you can put the kids into that realm but Mm -hmm. the kids always have their electronics and their gimmicks and all that bullshit you know Ange bought business cards Uh, janelle has fed us you know, they're always there and they're always supporting. They give up their time with us so that we can come be jackasses for you two hours a week. And sometimes even more when we have our meetings. Mm-hmm. Yes, we have meetings usually once a month. We discuss where the show is going, different show ideas. They give up more than anybody else. And for Angela to be the first right off the bat to put that $30 monthly donation, that was fantastic. She didn't have to do it. Mm-hmm. She's done enough. But certainly it is, it is much But even like I said, think about this, guys. If we just have 10 people doing that, that's that's 300 bucks yep. a, a month. That's, albeit not a lot, but I mean, well, my, my bad, yeah. 200 yeah, bucks 10. a month is a lot when you consider, you know, it's for, for the equipment, for this, for that, constant upgrades. We want to build the actual studio room. Mm-hmm. There, there's a lot of things. And this isn't going into our pockets. We're putting it right back into the show. 
somebody eventually is going to pick us up and pay for us, but that's yeah. fine. For but now, until that happens, for now it goes into the until equipment, happens, into the show. Right. We 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 are we're mm-hmm. we're we're humbly asking for help because let's say we score an interview with somebody and they say, well, that's great. I don't want to do it by phone. Come to my house. I live in Albany, New York. Gas in the car, man. Yeah. Maintenance on the vehicle. We have to get there somehow. You know what? That's that that is for the show. Or I mean, or not even that. Say say they want to do it, but they don't want to do it by phone. Say they want to do it by video chat. And we don't have the technology yet. We have the means and we know how to do it. Mm-hmm. We just don't have it yet. Right. So once we get that hooked up, then we can be like, Absolutely, we'd be more than happy to do a video chat with you. Well, live. question. You know what I'm saying? Like, boom. But we do. We need the help, guys. And if you can't, if you really can't donate. Do us a favor. Share the link. Without question. The more people that see it, even, like I said, just the more people that see the show, they listen to that one episode, the one episode that just chimes them in. I mean, hell, I think we've, even Pot- Potomatic, I've been getting an update of our shows, mm-hmm. and they have progressively went from like 7.5, 7.5, 7.0. We're up 8.0, 8.5, 9.0 for last week's show, the mm-hmm. week before that. Yep. Um People come up to me all the time that, like, you guys have been hitting it spot on the last couple of weeks. Like, Thank you to you guys. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, we, we appreciate Tugman that. Tugman said the same thing outside the show, mm-hmm. uh, outside the Disturbed show. He said the same thing. He wants to come down and either by phone or sit right here <laughs> exactly. and, and talk about some of these things. And, and that's, that's what we want, and this is exactly why we do this, because if we get you guys thinking – we get the fucking, we get the ball moving and we get the mm-hmm. bra- the brains churning and that's what we want. But we also want to get bigger. We want to get better. We want to get a bigger stage. We want to get a louder microphone. We want more people to hear what we're doing. And the best way that we can do this right now is from help from you guys. And I mean, like I said, we are, we're humbly asking for your help and we appreciate anything you can do. Even if it's just a share, that would be perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's about it guys. Um, maybe just maybe we can lighten up next week, but if you guys are still acting stupid and I'm not saying you guys who listen to the show, you guys, the sheeple, well, yeah, I it up a little bit the top sheeple list. Come on. of the divided States of America. I I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is, this is venom and rage that you can't do on Facebook mm-hmm. because no. again, you're going to butt hurt somebody. I still have the butt hurt form at the ready mm-hmm. for whenever somebody's. Oh, I do too. I'm, I'm good for that. I, I would love to lighten it up, but you know what? If if this week coming up between this Saturday and next Saturday holds the same results as the last few weeks, the revolution mm-hmm. will continue. And guys, real quick, before we bounce off, uh, I am going to be once again at Tokyo Sushi tonight. We have a very special person coming. Christy uh, Singleton, Evan, or Christy Evan Singleton will be there. Uh, we're trying to get the, get the money raised for her dog. Uh, there's going to be plenty of raffle baskets. There's going to be some great items from K&M Sports Shop there. Um, I believe they have a Derek Jeter sitting next to uh, David Ortiz. They got a couple really nice autographed ones. There's going to be a silent auction on some of these. There's going to be basket raffles on all these. You don't have to be present for the basket raffles. You do have to be present for the silent auctions. Um, it's going to run all the way until 1230 tonight. We'll have karaoke, obviously. Um, there's going to be some drink specials. We would love for you guys to just drop by, show your support. Andy is an incredible dog. In case uh, you guys didn't know, he's a, uh, he's a diabetic alert dog. And Christy has been multiple times where she's been on death, on the brink of death and not known it. And this dog really has saved her life multiple times at this point. Um, once she if, gets this dog, once this is her dog completely and everything is taken care of, we're not done. I've personally taken it upon myself that we're going to run this forward. We're going to have a crusade for anybody that needs these dogs. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this every year after this. It's going to be a, an annual thing. Christy's still going to run it too. But anybody who who needs these animals and deserves these animals – we're we're here for you, and we're Absolutely. we're not going to stop until we get this done for you know, Christy. We, we've talked about Christy a couple times when Ange went to Haiti. Same thing. Um, much like this time last year, former guest and friend of the show, Chad Hatfield, is running a half marathon mm-hmm. in support of clean water for third world countries. I put the link up on the page. Again, it doesn't hurt to throw five bucks. If 100 no. people throw five bucks at him, what has he got? 500 bucks, and it goes to a very worthy cause. Exactly. We're all about people helping people, and I wish I could go tonight. Unfortunately, I cannot. My mm-hmm. heart is with you. You know, if I had something to donate, I sh- I sure oh, surely certainly would. But like I said we we're throwing. If this it out is there. if this is my way to help and putting it out here like we do last year, this year, man, good luck to you, Christy. I'm hoping you raise a lot of money and 
for other people as well. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. Absolutely. So, guys, thank you. Enjoy the rest of this weekend. Um, we'll see you guys here next Saturday, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you know what's going on with the interview. <laughs> will, the, will the revolution continue, or will we have fun <laughs> next week? The choice is yours, America. <laughs> Thank you.